Plugin of the week comes from Sonox. It's the Claro plugin. This is a new plugin, uh, and uh, it's a, basically an EQ plugin, but with a different design. Now, if you're going to release a digital EQ plugin in the market that's just flooded with plugins, then you have to do something that is unique. You have to bring something to the table that creates a workflow or a sound or some kind of feature that you don't normally find. And I think actually this is something that Sonix has done quite well with. What they've designed this plugin to do is operate in three primary modes. The first mode being a plugin where you can work on the basic tonal structure of individual sounds. So you take a sound, you kind of drive basically low end, mid range, and high frequencies. And you get a selection of frequencies here, presets. You can tweak them, but you get more of a general EQ. You can drop in a shelf here uh, on the high end and the low end. This gives you that, that uh, Pultec resonant kind of bump there. Um, you get the high frequency shelf for air, uh, and you could slide the frequencies around. You have a high pass and a low pass filter, right? All the way up to 40K. Uh, it's an interesting thing having it like this because it allows you to shape the filters in a different way, which you'll see a little bit more in the tweak section. But the primarily primary design here is that you have three basic workflows. One where you're just shaping sounds very quickly as you're going through the production process. And then you can tweak those in, which will give you more of a full EQ. You could see the uh, spectrum analyzer that's built in. Uh, we'll get to that. And then you go to the mix settings, where then you can see interaction, compare or put plugins side by side, and then have EQ settings that sort of match or work up against each other. Now, when you actually start, and let's go back here for uh, for the produce plugin, the basic uh, idea of it here, and I'll go through all of the settings. You, you switch between the three different modes up here. You have the high pass and low pass filter here. Um, and let's see, what else? Then these are just kind of uh, little signature definitions that define the different frequency ranges. You got your basic EQ, so you drive it up or down. The cool part about this, one of the coolest things, and it's the best one I've seen, it has an auto game feature that automatically comes on. And the cool thing about that is that normally when you drive an EQ, you push into a frequency or you're also increasing the perceived volume. And if you don't compensate for that at the output um, and then carefully match it, then what you end up with is you keep pushing more and more energy. Whereas in reality, if you're careful about managing the output and say you push a little bit more low end and say some upper mids, uh, if you do that and you have the auto gain or if you compensate, then you're basically dipping all the mid-range energy that's in between those two boost points. So you get something that's a bit more complex than just boosting into a simple area. And the auto gain function does that in real time while you're working. Now, unlike most of these types of things and the ones that I've seen, rarely do they ever work because they seem to be based off of like some form of like a pink noise generation kind of thing. Uh, where they're looking at the full frequency spectrum, whereas this analyzes the input, analyzes the output, and then based on the frequency spectrum in and out, comes out with something that more or less sounds at the same volume. So what you should hear is more focus in the sound as you work, but it's the best automatic gain makeup that I've heard on any of the plugin. Of course, I probably haven't tried all of them. Now, this, there's two levels of this. There's a tone structure here. The frequency, the preset frequencies, are, are mostly connected to uh, vintage analog EQs, right? And they're usually in, in pretty you know solid numbers. Again, you could take any of those and slide it around to whatever you want, and it preserves that going into the tweak section. Now, there's two levels of this. There's also a width control. And what's interesting here is that what this is really doing is it's only EQing the side. So it's almost like a an EQ that is just for the side signal, not for the mid signal. But as you push up into it, what it's doing is it's either pushing up more energy, in this case, low frequency energy into the sides, or if you pull it down, it's taking it away, but it's not adding anything to the center. So you're really, and you'll see how this can kind of be a really amazing idea. Now, if you want to EQ the specific mid, then you dial straight into the tweak setting, which we'll get into in a second, which gets into much more detail. There's a bypass for the plugin, 
that works right there. So you have the two modes, tone and width. Uh, there's a question mark here, so you could display the quick GUI, all of that sort of stuff, see the version number, uh, connect to the user manual, etc. The settings here are pretty straightforward. You get the display size, so you get some preset sizes, um, and um, and you can, if you just wanted to go straight to tweak view, you can make that the default so that you bypass this tone processing section. Although I kind of like it because my process is not that dissimilar from this where I start more general, broader, shape the tone, then go in and focus. But, you know, um, that doesn't always work with every style and everything. And based on your workflow, this may or may not be the right way to go for you. Uh, when we go to the tweak panel, now what happens is anything that we've done here in, uh, in this section here, so let's just push up a little bit of something, pull something down in the mids and just kind of take that. So let's just say that we push an EQ, you know, something like this in here, push up some high frequency energy. Now, when I go into the tweak, you'll see those basic EQ shapes here. And now if I uh, right click on here, I can split it out. I can decide that I want that to only be on the left, only be on the right stereo just in the mid signal or just in the side signal i can turn it off i can change the filter type here to whatever i want and um and by splitting it now i'll have a duplicate of it and it will work left and right and then i can adjust it and sometimes that's helpful for balancing out a sound like a room mic that has more kick on the left than on the right hand side something like that all right so we have that um and uh, it also has the auto gain feature in here. If you decide that you want to turn off that feature, you could freeze the settings because maybe you get up to a certain point, but now you want to shape it a little bit more without this auto compensating. You can freeze it. It will preserve where you're at and, and then you're good to go. Uh, has the same bypass function here. This has a resize control, so you can resize this a little bit better. Um, there's also a keyboard up here, so you can select specific frequencies connected to musical notes, if that's the way that you like to work. So lots of options here. If I go back to the produce section and here for a second, and now I do a little shaping, like let's just say, for example, I drive energy away here from the low end, but I push more 5K into the sides or something. When I go back to the tweak section, now you'll see that comes in that light purple color here um, that goes and Now you'll see that shape. And then from here, of course, I can do the same sorts of adjustments. So I can change the shape, do all of that sort of stuff. And with any of these filters, you also see here where you can adjust the Q. Um, you could adjust the frequency that it's selected. Uh, you could adjust the uh, the shape, basic shape of the filter, right? So you could put it up, like you could see here, you know, up to you know, hundred, uh, um, uh, the you know, a sharper Q, um, and uh, work with it. That so that's I'm sorry, different. This is like the um, um, like on a filter where you have the order. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, first order, second order, 6 dB per octave, 12 dB per octave, that's uh, shaping it that way. So you, you can work it that way, which is what I was basically doing here. Um, and then you also have the Q knob, which allows you to work it there. So it gives you a lot of options in terms of the filter shape. Uh, there are also some different keys that allow you to do that. If you hold the Alt key or Option key, uh, that will allow you to solo up that frequency area. If you hold the Command key, you can adjust the Q. Uh, and uh, and then otherwise, you could drag it around up or down just on, on its own just to, to get it in. I believe the Shift key allows you to fine-tune that so you work a little bit um, and smaller graduations when you move it around. Okay, basics there. Now, when you get through all of that, the third stage is the mix control. And this is where you can then do comparisons up against other things. Like say, I have this on a bus, but maybe I want to work on the bass sound. So I can work on any of the bass sounds here and then uh, work with them. Or for example, work with my, um, make the kick out my, my primary one. I have no EQ on there. Uh, but then put it up against the bass. So if I put it up against my overdrive bass, now I have the overdrive bass here. And the cool thing about this is it adds in other features. So I could do, for example, an inverted EQ, right? So if I pop in an EQ here, you'll notice that it will take away, like say I move this, this frequency, boost it into the bass, it will simultaneously take that out of the kick drum. 
So maybe I set up the basic thing, but I want to tweak it here. So maybe it's like taking too much out of the kick drum, or maybe I want to widen the cue on this a little bit, right? So I can do that for the bass. And fundamentally, I can work with the two of them side by side. Now, as I play audio through here, what you'll see, and uh, let me just, uh, let's see if I can, I'll do this, but I'll mute it just so I can talk at the same time. So what you'll see are, are these different tonal zones. Now, what will happen is if you see like a yellow area light up, that'll show that there is a conflict between frequencies. And this is where you can, uh, and you could also see that up here. So you could see the different areas in here where there's conflicting um, frequencies. Now, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a problem. That's okay. Uh, but at least gives you a visual representation of where those things are, and then you can adapt your settings accordingly. All right, so let's say that I want to take this out. I can exit out here, do the same thing here. And uh, let's let's make a little noise with it just so you can kind of get an idea of what it sounds like. So let's start from the verse here with the drums. Now this is just on the, the drum and bass channel, but right now I have the bass muted. So let's just check this out uh, just with uh, working you know, with, with the raw drums here. And we'll start with the produce, just so you could see the full process in action. Oh, I see, hold on. Uh, here, let me do this. Move one of these over to replace it, and then we'll have a fresh plug in here. Okay, there we go. Right, so that's the basic tone structure here. Now, if I work with the width control, so you could see here, and if I look at the tweak control, this is the basic shape that I've given the, the drums here, just working that way. So there's also the thing, the visual here, where you're not seeing exactly what you're doing, so you're not being influenced by it. But I can still move this around. I'm not stuck to the preset ones that are here. I'm just setting that up and kind of following along here. Now, if I go to the width control, now I have bit more measured control about where I push this energy. So remember, this only pushes either more signal into the sides at a selected frequency or takes it away from the sides, but it does nothing to add to the center channel. So you could see how quick and easy it is just to kind of work that and drive some depth and width into it immediately just by working this way. Filters sound amazing. You know, um, Sonics has been producing um, algorithmic EQs going all the way back to the late 80s. <laughs> so they've been doing this for a very long time and they understand very well how to make that work. And if you've never used the Sonox EQs, then, um, you know, still they stand uh, to this day up against uh, uh, many other, most other digital EQs that are out there. Um, 
So working within this here, now I can work the shape in with a tweak or kind of, you know, dial things in whatever way that I want to, you know, get a little bit more aggressive about the way that I work with it. Now, um, let's just say that I'm going to take the, now I have my bass tracks kind of put in here. I'm just going to feed them directly to the output and bypass this particular stem here for a second just so I can work with the bass tracks sort of independently here and then I'll show you a little bit of this up against the uh because this was just on the stem and then show you the mix control and see how that kind of works so let's stay here with the shelving EQ uh, let me select the right plugin So here I, I'm working with this. So now let me go to the tweak here and then I could take this if I wanted to and then just sort of drive something a little steep in here. <laughs> auto compensated it gain in real time really just makes working so much faster so here's something this could be something I automated if I wanted a little bit of a sweeping effect through that particular section of the song let's go to there's a also a regular electric bass that kind of fills out in an in-between section so let's just check that out and kind of work with that for a bit You notice with these on the mono tracks that there is no uh, tone control uh, in, that there is on the, uh, on the stereo version, or the width control, I'm sorry, it has the tone control, because there's no stereo, it's just a mono channel. So if you are missing that, then just be aware of that on that end. Right? <laughs> Let's see, maybe I can uh, get away with it twice. Let's see what happens. And if I wanted to just, let's just say I work in the kick drum sound here a little bit too. All right, so I can also tweak this in. So if I wanted this to be a bit more focused here, I can narrow the Q. And if I... can solo up that section. All right, so that's on top of what I already did over here. So now if I wanted to say work with this up against the bass sound, I can then, uh, let me just uh, take this 
out over here, go to the mix section, and then I can decide, well, what is it that I want to use as my primary focus? So let's just say I'm going to work up against the bass distortion. Um, I can make, uh, let's, I can make one of the two, the reference, that's the one with the star. So that'll move that one up at the top. And then at the bottom, I can select any other. So let's just say that's the kick out. Now I can work the combination of the two together. <laughs> You know, and it sounds pretty good there. I mean, if I really wanted to get tweaky, I could narrow this a little bit. And if I use, let's just say the uh, other bass, the bass clean, let me just compare that up here. Because maybe because that's in its upper range a little bit. Maybe what I can do here, if I go back to that uh, bass, uh, excuse me, bass clean and instantiation here. That's giving me the kick. So let me go back over to here. Maybe what I can do is I can uh, dial in the high pass filter here a little bit. And uh, let's just go back over here. And then maybe what I can do is uh, really lighten that up a little bit. So the idea being that I can really, you know, I can dial in and I can work with any of the individual sounds like this. I think I had the kick one up here. So let's just see if that preserved the settings. Yes. So now I could see these uh, um, settings here, but it also isolates out tracks. Uh, it's a little different with every DAW. It doesn't work entirely, but it'll also organize out the track types versus the buses which are like versus the effect returns. So if I have one on the master channel, I can uh, filter it out. If I have one on effect returns for reverbs, I can filter those out. And that way, if the list gets long of plugins, then you could just run it. Now, you could put this on top of existing processing. You could start out your process this way. But I really like the workflow with it. Um, there are a few things that I would like to see. I'd like to see a little undo redo, maybe a little AB kind of uh, store. That would be nice to see. Um, and uh, those basic features would be a little bit helpful unless I just happen to miss something uh, through all of this, which I don't think I have. Uh, but just the if alone for the auto gain feature, it, it's a it's a no brainer in terms of just like it sounds great. The workflow is really cool. Uh, you can dial in something quick just to get a quick tonal balance without dealing with gain issues and bypassing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, and it it sounds great. I mean, just all the way around, I'm really digging it. So uh, a nice one. And uh, a quick turnaround for me on this one. I actually downloaded it only yesterday, set it up, and found myself working with it very quickly, like right away. It feel, felt very intuitive to me right away. And then when I went back, read the manual on it, it kind of spackled in some of the gaps of things that I didn't totally understand. Um, but um, that's an important thing to me, especially in this marketplace where there's so many different EQ types. Uh, I really dig the workflow for this. And I think that's something to consider if you're looking for something um, that's gonna give you a different workflow from what you're normally used to. Uh, with the individual plugins. So there you have it, the Sonox Claro. It is the Mixing with Mike plugin of the week.